Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here. And in today's video, we are going to see how we will use this new distribution mode in um, Cinema 4D to generate clones without them intersecting. So this was purely done without any adjustment or using any effector to generate um, this non-intersecting circles on a text object, right? And I did the same thing on a sphere, like which is typically called like circle packet, right? So let's actually get into Cinema 4D and see how we will do this particular effect. So I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm using Cinema 4D R26 and this is the scene I actually rendered and just showed in the picture viewer. So this particular distribution mode I think was released in R25 because I actually heard of it in a video, I think a video chat with um, Rocket Lasso and Rick on when I think Cinema 4D R25 was released and they were talking about some of the new features and I think somewhere in there it was mentioned that there's this particular distribution mode. So recently I was actually working on something and I, it came to mind. So I decided to do this quick um, video tutorial on how to actually use it to generate clones. So let's create a new scene. And in here, um, it's quite simple, but unfortunately it's not right directly under the clone object. It will need a little bit of node, but it's very, very simple, nothing complicated. So it shouldn't be scary. So to start using nodes, we need to change our layout to um, a node layout, right? So we can simply come into our windows and say new, uh, node editor and it will give us this new node editor where we can put in our nodes. And if you have a second screen, you can actually move it like mine away to it, right? Or we can simply come here, you can see we have a new layout here, which is node. When you click on it, now Cinema 4D changes the interface to a node layout for you, how you can work with nodes. Right, so now this is our notes um, where we get our notes and everything. And in here, we will need to do some two notes, which is the first one is the actually the distribution mode, which is blue noise. So if you click on this plus button here and type in blue, you can see we have blue noise here. And uh, we have surface blue noise and surface scale blue noise. The one we are going to use is the surface scale blue noise. So let's drag and drop that one in. And then we will need another node, which is called matrix up, which we will connect our distribution into the matrix before we can connect it into this scene root for you to show here. So we come in, click on the plus sign again and type matrix, right? And this is a matrix up. We drag and drop it in here. So these are the only two nodes that you need, right? So we can simply quickly connect it and you can see it's giving us this node, which for now, we don't really mind, All right? And now we will connect this matrix up into the child uh, port here. And now everything is fine. So the rest is the object that we want to clone and the surface that we want to clone on, right? Now with that, you can simply create it in here. We can come in here and create primitives in here, right? If you come geometry primitives, you can see we have all of them here. But for us not to be confused, let's actually create our own within the classic Cinema 4D um, um, object manager so i'll come in here and let's first of all create a circle and one thing you always have to set in, make uh, make sure you set in mind that the object that you are going to clone should always have a radius of one no matter what the it should always have a radius of one so in this case i'll make the circles radius one all right and later if you want to change the size you can actually do it within the surface blue um surface scaled blue noise right so this is this circles these are the ones you are going to clone and now on which surface do we want to clone on so with that i can simply come in here now create on the i want it to be on the text surface right now when i tried using the normal text object it was not working when i had more than one letter and it was giving me some issues i don't know why so what worked is i actually use the text spline so i'll create a text spline right i'll select the text spline and i'll change i'll type in something simple like c right and I'll change the from regular to bold so that it's a bit thicker. And let's middle align it and put it in, in a extrude. So I'll come into my object and I'll create extrude and make the text line a child of the extrude. And you can see it's extruding and giving it some offsets, right? We can actually go ahead and clone it on all over the surface of this. But then in this case, I just want it, I don't want to do that. So let's select the extrude, come to the object tab and let's set the offset to zero. So now we don't have any uh, depth. It's just a flat text, right? So we want to generate our circles on the surface of this flat text. So to do that, 
first of all, we drag in the object you want to clone, or we can actually select the two and drag them in at the same time. And you can see this is the extrude and this is the circle. So let's first of all close all of these um, open ports like this one and let's close them so that you get our scene a bit tidy. So now the surface that you want to clo clone on, which is the extrude text, right, will now be piped straight directly into the surface scaled blue noise node, right? So to do that, you can see it's asking the um, input it's expecting is geometry. So let's click on our extrude output. You can see in here, we have a geometry output here, right? Down here, you can see geometry. So we have to connect this geometry output to this geometry input. So let's drag and drop it. So now we know the surface that now the surface blue no, uh, scale no surface scale blue noise knows the uh, surface we are supposed to clone on. Now for it to know the object we are going to clone on, uh, we are going to clone. We should pipe it through the matrix op. So what basically the matrix op is doing is that it's generating positions of up uh, in space like points position in space so any object that we sort of put uh, pipe in here it now generate populate those objects on that in that positions right basically some that's what it's doing maybe a bit complicated but that's basically what's going on so now with the circle like you can see it's looking for up input right and in the circle we have up output so we can simply it corresponds so we can simply drag and drop it in here and now um nothing happens if you check our viewport nothing happens right and that's because i like, think in the text the extrude if i select the extrude it doesn't have a lot of um, segment let's change it from garage shading to garage shading with lines you can see it doesn't have enough segments so let's select the extrude come to caps and let's change it, the caps type from um engons to any of the regular grid something you can see now we have enough um, segments and now you can see we have some circles generated which is fine but it's generating in the wrong direction so you can select the circle and change it from the plane is x y to z uh, x z and now you can see it's generating our circles let we can go ahead and hide uh, this thing our uh, text we don't want to see it for now and you can see it's generating clones and it's not intersecting can get as close as being on the same, but it would never intersect, right? So now the clones that is generating, I think are quite big. So for us to change the size of the clone and everything, that's where we do everything within the surface uh, scaled blue noise. So we select the surface scaled blue noise and you can see in the attribute manager, it gives us its attributes. So now the number of clones we want to generate, you can see we can generate as much as we want. And it's quite fast because you are not using nodes. So you can generate like say 2000 even if you want and now if we want to control the size of the scale so what we have is that maximum size and the minimum size so the maximum size of our sphere of our circle is um 25 right in the surface so let's reduce it right and now you can see you can set it to like say five by five and you generate equal sized um circles but it will never intersect and you can increase it even more all right, and you try as much as much as possible not to intersect. You can improve parking in here and now all of that. But if you want, you can also reduce the minimum size to like say two, and let's actually increase the maximum size to like say um ten. And you can see we have some random random sized spheres, but it's not intersecting, and at the same time, it's trying to populate the surface of our um, extrude text, right? So we can go ahead and play around with it, make it like five and one, and now can generate as much as possible. So that's basically how it works, just to these two nodes, surface scale, blue noise, and the uh, matrix um, up, and now you can connect your object you want to clone in here, and the object surface you want to clone on here, and now you have it. So let's, to do the same thing with something like spheres, it's simple let's go ahead and create a new scene for me to go over again so i'll create a new scene here and i'll do the same thing look for um like type in blue and immediately start typing in we'll bring the surface scale blue noise let's bring this one in here and let's bring in matrix so matrix so matrix up all right so 
and you know we will connect this to the matrix once again right and now let's create another object so i'll come in here and this time i'll create a sphere in the sphere i'll make it like one remember the object you want to clone should always have a radius of one so i'll make the radius of the sphere one and now we want to clone it on a surface of another sphere or it could be any other object right you know what i'll come in here instead of using the normal primitive here i typically like using the one in here so i'll come into my notes click on this particular one and i'll say i'll type in primitive right and you can see we have um, primitive mesh primitive and spline primitive we have this one to mesh primitive group but that's not what you want so the mesh primitive is actually a node but it's also an actual object we can use in the classic cinema 4d so i can simply drag and drop it in here into cinema 4d and you can see we have actually a cube here but it's actually a node now the advantage for this particular primitive is that you can change it so now you see we have cube but if i come in here and change it to we can change it to oil tank we can change it to sphere we can change it to like any other way instead of creating several of them if you feel like oh this shape is not cool you can simply um change it to any shape that you want so that's one thing i like about this particular mesh primitive so i'll bring in this mesh primitive right and now let's select the two and click drag and drop it into our scene right so this is our um, mesh primitive and this is the sphere we want to clone so we know what to do the up output comes in here to the matrix up and let's right and then in here you make sure in the up output we open this let's close these ones you can see the up output we click on the triangle in front of it and in there we have geometry pots we connect that one straight into our um how do you call it our surface scale blue noise right and nothing is happening here as well so let's check our mesh let's check display right let's make sure we have enough segments in here all right and now let's um select the the matrix up you should make sure it's connected so i'll select this the matrix up connected to our chart and you can see it's generating all these um, spheres on the surface of our um, uh, mesh primitive so if we come in here to the surface uh, scale blue noise you can now um count, increase the count and everything reduce the size to like say five and one and okay let's make it like say um select the surface scale blue noise rather and make it like this. and now let's increase the number of oops not the offsets but rather the number of counts right and you can see it generates as much let's change this one it generates all of these clones without them necessarily um intersecting right so basically that's how the surface scale blue noise work and i hope probably in the next release or whatever release they should actually make it come into the classics in my body so that it can be simply within somewhere within the clone object and you can simply use it to clone on surface and everything now after everything is done how do you actually bring it into your classics in my body because you can see all i have here is the mesh primitive and the sphere that you are cloning but you don't have the clones itself so if for instance i want to move it i can't i can't literally do anything to it right it's stuck within the nodes and you can't have it in the classic cinema 4d view if you want to do anything to it, you have to do it within the nodes so to bring it into classic cinema 4d let me actually go back to this first one which is the c and it uses the same so for us to bring this into classic cinema 4d so that we have actual access to the splines and everything we have to come in here if you come to the um scene up here you can see you have create and the next is edit click on edit and you come down you have current scene state to classic so now if i click on that you can see it's brought it's created something here scene notes representation so now what it has done is that it has brought it into our classic view for us to see so i can go ahead and disable these two and now if i select this and move it you can see we have it in as my 4d viewport and can do things to it but it has all this hierarchy and all of that i don't want so all, what i'll do is i'll middle click on this middle click on the scene notes representation null and you'll select everything that is a child of the null right which is the same as coming to um edit and coming to select children 
right? So I'll just middle click on it and I've selected all of that. And then I'll come to objects and I'll say connect objects plus delete. And now everything under it will be make um, connected and delete, right? And now we have our spline. So now if I come to, let's say points mode, you can see we have all these um, points that we can actually manipulate because it's now a classic schema for the object. And now we can go ahead and put it in our extrude right and now you can see it's been extruded let's reduce the offset to like say um 10 right and now how i actually added my let me quickly show the material setup so let me actually open my the original um one i actually did with redshift so in fact let me do everything here from scratch so that we see so for me to render it right i don't necessarily need the node now i've brought it in here so i can simply go back to standard viewport and now i have my um circles in my classics in my phone viewport so now i can simply instead of there are several ways i can actually get in the individual um circles by themselves so i can use the mode in the more graph menu, I can use either the fracture or Voronoi fracture. So I use the Voronoi fracture, make uh, extrude the chart of the Voronoi fracture, and you can see it's giving them random colors, but at the same time, it's fracturing it, but we don't want it to fracture it. So I'll select the Voronoi fracture and come to the source and delete this point generator. And you can see now, all we have is just the individual um, circles, the extruded circles and each of them is having a different color. So that's basically, or oh, the next was to create a redshift material. So let me actually show that one as well. So I'll come in here and I'll create a redshift material and I'll apply it to my um, Voronoi fracture, right? Double click on the redshift material to open the shader um, graph in here. And I'll come in here and I'll look for user data. So I'll search user data and they give us color user data. So the color user data, I'll select the output and connect it to the blue part. And now we'll connect it to the col uh, diffuse color, All right? And in the diffuse color, we can come in here to the attribute name, click on this particular triangle and come to objects and you see geometry ID color, right? So what's basically, um, the Voronoi um, fracture is doing is that it's bro broken every extruded circle as its own geometry and it, it all of them have their own id let's actually see if i can find it if i select the Voronoi fracture and come to um transform is it tra no yeah i think transform can change it to id index and i can see each and every circle has its own index so that's what this color user ID is using to see them as different random of their colors, right? It's using to give them random colors. So with this, now we can simply um, bring our redshift render view so that you can see, if I hit render, you can see now it's redshift is showing us the render. Let me dock it somewhere here. And now you can see redshift is showing us um, our random colors but if we want to limit it to our own sort of colors that we want all we have to do is to come in here and type in ramp right and i can bring in the ramp node connect the color user data to the ramp general input and now connect the output color to the diffuse color right so now you can see it's now the randomness is based on this gradient right of the ramp Right, so this is where now you can use it to change it to the, what specific color you want. So let's say the black, I want it to be um, this purple color. I can do that uh, somewhere in here. Right, and now I can select the white and I say I want it to be maybe this pinkish what, And maybe I say in the middle here, I want it to be like white, whitish, right? And let's try and move it a bit and all of that so basically you keep playing around with it so basically this way you get your random colors and everything from and now you can go ahead and do this is just to show you the distribution mode right another thing is that even though all of this is going on still you've closed your node and everything but still your node and everything is there so for instance if 
you don't like the seat and you want to change it, right? Right now, it's in the classic semaphore demo, so you can't change it. But I can go ahead and delete this one. You don't want it. Let's hide it for though. And now, if you go back to our notes again, you can see um, we still have everything here working. So if I enable these two, right, it will come back. And now I can simply select this text and change it to like, say, let me actually add circle. Um, let me say add I R C L. And you can see now we have it's writing everything and all of them is live, right? It's working and all of that. So when you think you are cool with it, you can simply come in here again, edit and say current state, um, current state to a classic and you will do the same thing and you can replace it with the old one. So it's not entirely parametric, but then it's somewhat like still alive and you can always go in and change it and get it where you want. So I hope this video was useful and you've learned um, one or think, uh, two things from this particular video. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And kindly please rem remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Thank you once again.